Hello guys, welcome to Deco Uncovered, and today I'm here again with Rakib. You've been a long time, Rakib. How are you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> been a long time. I'm good. I'm good. So in today's topic, we'll be talking about what is something terrifying that we've all learned to accept in life. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and let's go. What is something terrifying that you've learned to accept in your life from growing up? Um, just coming to terms. I'm realizing that we are all going to okay, so <laughs> that the inevitable will happen in life. Um, so like death is inevitable, accepting that. Um, yeah, just just um, the fact that we have to grow. You know, we have to age, grow older. Sometimes in life, you I'll think like, well, I'm actually an adult. You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> Growing up, I'm going to be like, if I live long enough, I'll be in my 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, all that, you know, just learning yeah. to grow. Um, and I feel like that's terrifying to think of sometimes, especially when you're not at the stage in life where you, where you want to be, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy because we know, we know when we're growing up, we're thinking, ah, uh, I want to grow up quicker so I can do all the things I want to do. <laughs> it's so true. That is so true. But in school, I'm like, oh, so I was like, 18 so my parents don't have to tell me what to do and i can drink i can do whatever adults look so it just looks like so lit and, uh, and then boom at hey, 21 not where i'm at where i want to be <laughs> you know money you just realize money is such a stressful thing um when life is just a roller coaster and it's just a crazy experience yeah so like you said death right so how how were you able to learn to accept it because i haven't learned to accept that's it that's what i'm about to say <laughs> um well we're gonna have to accept it either way but you know what i mean mm -hmm. um i don't think i can handle death even if like in fact like i just can't i'll just admit that it's something that you accept and learn over the time in your life you know yeah. i know there's obviously people out there with no parents or like Obviously, like you know, their parents have passed as you know in their teens or at any sort of age, and then for people like me, I still have both my parents, but I, like I only live with one of them. Um, I haven't spoken or seen the other one for about over ten years. Um, what was the question? <laughs> so you were talking about death, right? Yeah. I was saying like, <laughs> how were you able to accept it? And you said you said you haven't really accepted it, but I said that you just accept it because yeah. you have to be really, and never <laughs> it's just it's going to happen. Anyway. It's going to happen. I don't think we can fully uh, unless you have no empathy mm -hmm. or have no emotion, then you accept it. But I feel like we don't really, we never really fully accept it. We always forget about it, mm. and we try to forget about it, and I don't know. Would you say that it's just? circumstances that's then the stuff that happens around you that makes you more terrified about it or and how people seem to feel during that time that kind of scares you or it's just the death itself that scares you you know what i mean like what if maybe when someone dies they are, they are going to a very peaceful place but because of how the family members and just friends feel at that time kind of brings that fear okay she had all my parents or my sister to go through the situation is that what scares you of course you, especially if you're say you're in a family if you're the oldest sibling you know typically you don't want to be the first to go before your siblings <laughs> just even if even for your parents as well you'd want to be for you don't want to see them go mm -hmm. let's be honest um and if that's happened when and if that's happened it's really sad and yeah but um just um i guess it would be the it's quite deep you know but the way maybe the way you die what age all them things come into factor and how mm -hmm. people react you know even rap and then um like rappers for example you know when you hear about the death of like rappers and how people react and stuff it just mm -hmm. plays on your mind for a bit yeah especially if you were following them mm -hmm. um yeah family members it, it, it's crazy um this 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 one is a bit deep so let's switch to something a bit more calmer 
in terms of money, right? What have you learned to accept during your you know financial decisions you made, right? What have you learned to accept it? To right. expect the unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quite deep in it. Like I remember being eighteen, seventeen or eighteen. I didn't have a credit card at the time. You can't have credit cards to your eighteen, right? I can't remember. Anyway. <laughs> but I think I saw you. You can have it before that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, I had a little pep talk with uh, my uncle. Um, I remember him talking to me and my bro, talking about credit and credit cards and stuff. And I'm thinking, wow, oh, he's giving me some good advice, you know. And then I completely went against that like a year later or so. <laughs> and then fast forward to now, fast forward to now, I won't go too deep into it, but it's just like, wow. I just had to learn to accept that, you know. Money is a crazy thing once it's in your hands, you know. Yeah, it's a different kind. It's a different type of mindset, isn't it? You say, like, you need to. It's just like how, when people go, "Oh, do you think money will change you if you were to be rich?" I feel like you can never really know the answer, mm-hmm. fully know the answer. You know, I could say, "Oh, I'll be the chillest millionaire, everything," and who knows mm-hmm. if I'm rich, I could be like the biggest. You yeah, know, always you trying yeah, to say, yeah, <laughs> the biggest. Un- annoying person in the world to deal with who knows um yeah but that's one thing you have to accept that money can make you evil i don't want to uh, uh, money i'd say money can be evil what do you think i wouldn't say money can be evil i knew you were going to say, say people can be evil in the control of money okay so if see if you Money is meant to serve people, but once you let, once you start serving money, that's when it starts. You know, you start, you start, you start doing certain things that you you're going against just the natural law of things, isn't it? But what I'm trying to say is, if you should, you're meant to control money, you're meant to do this by like you, you know what I mean? Like that's your boss for me. Mm-hmm. No, you're the boss. But once people start letting these things control, it's like just like everything else, addiction. Anything can be addicted to everything, right? But if you have enough self control, right, it's not going to overcome you or control you, right? So the same thing as money. I wouldn't say that the money itself is a bad thing. It's you not having enough. Of course, yeah. The beholder, yeah. True. Yeah. 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 Money is not good for everyone. <laughs> money is good for everyone. Oh, because I mean, I mean, in the context of in like, once you're in hold of it, um, and mm-hmm. you don't know how to spend or manage it, mm-hmm. you know. It's like yeah. how you know people go, oh, in school they never told me about taxes, how to um, mortgage a house, mortgages, taxes, um, money management, all that, credit cards, credit, how important credit is. Yeah, but back to the topic. What? Um, so what have you learned throughout those years, isn't it? Based on the financial decisions you made. Hmm. So, <laughs> I'm only, I'm still 21, I'm still young, I wouldn't say I have that much experience, I'm no mo- money master, I'm not an accountant, I don't know what I'm 100% doing with my money. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are really good at saving, some people are really good at spending. <laughs> um, and you're I, one of those people that are good at spending, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would say, what was the question again? <laughs> so what, what are you forgot the question myself? Um, what have you learned in it based on the financial decisions in it like, that I've made? What have I learned? Well, the, the full those mistakes, the mistakes. For the made. mistakes, I've learned to accept that that money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> nah, just, no, sorry, it's just that money. You know, if it if it, it comes and goes, you know, it actually just comes and goes. You can come with the mindset of oh, I'll make that money back, but you never know. So. That's where saving helps on a rainy day, you know. Um, so I've, I've learned to, with my, you know, some people are straight off the bat are good with saving money, and then other people are good at spending, and then come to learn that, oh, money is something important for this, that, and the other. You know, money can bring happiness, um, it can bring a lot of negativity as well. For example, the lottery if you win, and then like, if your family aren't all that rich and you're the only rich one and then you being a nice person you give all that 
a, a portion of the money divided by whoever and then mm -hmm. they may not need you anymore so it can corrupt your family and yourself yeah and some people say that they were better off without the money so mm -hmm. but i've not hit that stage yet so we'll yeah out. i don't think I, I would ever say this regardless of my my situation in life because i know how it feels like being without money so <laughs> I don't think I'd ever say this to be honest. But in terms of relationship as well, what is the most terrifying thing that you feel interested in? Anyway, when I say relationship, it doesn't necessarily mean be your girlfriend or the girls you're dating, your friends. It's people, it's social life, so. Oh, it's deep. Same, similar with the death thing, you know, I'd say, um, in fact, that nothing lasts forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I just think. When you're with someone, obviously you don't want to come into a relationship thinking, oh, right, this is going to be temporary, this is going to end at this time, blah, 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 blah. Um, if you've had experience with relationships and you've been, you become uh, subconscious um, and come into a relationship with, oh, what well, if this person does this, what well, if this person does this, then... <laughs> oh, sugar, sorry. What have you learned? What's the most terrifying thing you've learned in the you know, <laughs> film? Yes, so, so nothing lasts forever, man. Like, but don't come in with that mentality of oh, let me just do whatever because money, uh, nothing, because nothing lasts forever. So this relationship, I'm gonna treat it like it's nothing. Blah blah blah. So in my experience, currently, I'm still learning. I'm in the learning phase, learning, learning about myself and the other people, uh, and the other person, whoever I'm with. You know, <laughs> just got um, to accept that not everything's perfect. You know, it could be good one day, next day, boom. But yeah. So how you know you know you said it could be good one day, the next day is it bad, right? Have you been in a situation where it was just <coughs> bad the next day? And how, <laughs> and how, <laughs> okay, let's let's say four years ago, right? How were you able to? overcome that how were you able to get through those times you know those heartbreaking times i'll say a terrifying thing that i come to accept four years ago okay so i was young naive un unexperienced i wouldn't even count it as a relationship I might have been what, six four years i don't know t early late teens mm -hmm. you know um what have i come to accept from what from those relationships in it, like during those years, yeah. were you in a relationship four years ago? When I was 16, mm -hmm. four years ago, 20, 19, 18, 17, um, 17, I think I was just single, I was just single for that, anyway, was with someone, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, who begins with an S, -da 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 -da. anyway, oh, um, you just mentioned <laughs> the name, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, she's not going to watch this, I'm oh. surprised, I'm posting you on Facebook, bro, <laughs> um, so being at the age of 16 you're quite young your mind is still learning and fresh um, you may think oh it's going to be perfect you're going to think it's perfect it's going to last forever and then once it ends you learn from that experience or you either don't and it's fall in the same trap again and that's what countless that, that, that's what certain people do countless times even in, at this age 20 early 20s oh, so many of us you know, it's going through stages and yeah okay and how about being alone that would be, this is going to be the last question right and this is something i've observed throughout people around our age even older people is how are you able to how, how, how have you learned to be alone be without being when you're when you're without a relationship how are you how are you able to be alone. Learn how to, how do you learn to be alone? Because some people don't know how to be alone. True that. I, um, I just come to accept that from my nature, I'd say personally, my nature, being a lone wolf, being a loner in a way, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be negative, positive, whatever. Being a loner, just growing up by myself, I guess, even though I have a massive family, my household just sort of Keeping myself to myself a lot of times. I remember one six, 
one, you know, in the six weeks holiday back in school, I remember one on one of the years, I spent like the whole six weeks in do okay, that's kinda of sad. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not as much deep like it's deep though, like from all that experience, um what wait, what's the question? Oh. I keep you getting old. <laughs> oh, no, it's just when you Yeah, sorry. How My attention how, how how did you learn to be alone? I just learned to be myself, isn't it? Just for experience, you know, people hurt you, especially if you're an introvert. You you would understand what I'm talking about. Um, being in groups um, kills your energy, kills your 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 aura. And then being by yourself, you cool down. You 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 learn to just like accept that you don't need people in life. You were born alone in this world. You can you will die alone in this world. Um, <laughs> it's not so deep, you know. <laughs> it's a fact, man. Yeah? Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah, just, just you don't you don't have to be so codependent in life all the time. We're only human, so we all get upset at times. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the truth. We're just human, but I feel like you. Some people just naturally are able to be by themselves. Oh, I feel like this is difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm 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 all over the place. I know how to, I know how to cope. With experience and stuff and just mm -hmm. like self talking and mm -hmm. just using your mind to broaden things out yeah. you know you just sort of learn how to as i'm saying i'm still learning i'm only 21 i'm not going to talk like i'm a master at this you know i'm trying to master the skill of being yeah. alone yeah of learning how to be alone and sometimes you just feel like all you've got is your self talk isn't it and your just self -talk. I, I don't yeah. Sometimes, isn't it? I mean, not all the time, but in certain situations, you just feel like, you know, it's kind of, how do I put it? I forgot what you, you were even saying. I was going to say something based on what you said, oh. right? But based on what you said, well, I would say sometimes, right, because someone like an, I mean, someone like you, right? When I say someone like I don't mean by trying to be deep. But you know someone like you, yeah, like, a lot of times being alone, being at home, is, is the best thing because when you go outside, people try and tend to, <clears throat> change your ideas about what you think about yourself or what you think about saying things. For example, <clears throat> for the past few weeks, I've not really gone out, I've not really gone to the club, nothing. For the past two months, actually, I think, yeah. And I've just been on just constant learning and just getting to understand one or two things, right? And if one time when I just started interacting with someone from outside, I could tell that they started to influence me, change my ideas think, and beliefs. Think of that, yeah, it's the influence. Yeah. yeah the influence people, people have on you. Exactly. It's and not always a negative thing, though, because you can become quite ignorant on your own. Definitely, definitely. definitely. You could brainwash yourself as well. <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, your instincts know what's good and what's wrong. Definitely. Your gut definitely knows. Your gut know. feeling. Yeah. So, obviously now, I've, I've, I've got back... Going, I've gone. I've been going outside one or two times, right? Meeting the people I feel like is the right people to meet. You know what I mean? Not by going out to the club, but meeting the right people that to have the right conversation with. Mm -hmm. And so going back to what I was saying, once you could tell. So as soon as I started going out, interacting with people, I could tell that they started changing my beliefs. Right? Those beliefs that I had that was uplifting me through the inside, in the inside, I could tell those people were slightly turning back. Turning the back from, you know what I mean, like so sometimes yeah, like. So were you telling them that they're wrong and I'm right? No, 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 not even that. Were you just listening to them and thinking, okay? No, no, at least I was listening to them to kind of observing that okay, it's interesting that some is always good to be in your own state, bro. Always. Like, not always. You say always. Okay. But I feel like most of the time, to get to know yourself, it's always good to be in your own little state. About let's say sixty percent of the time. Mm. I'd say yeah. Um, you shouldn't always, no, because you know how you were saying there's some people who just have to always be with someone. Mm -hmm. It can be anything from just like them going out even to the shop or something. They have to be with someone. Have to call a friend to go to the to, to the shop. They have to be so codependent on another human being mm -hmm. all the time. They can't think for themselves. That's. Is that weak? Would you say that's a weak-minded mentality? 
No, I wouldn't say that's a weak mind mentality. Something I'll just probably say maybe something is going on. Yeah, you never know what they've gone yeah, through as well. So yeah, that's, that's, I would not say that. Yeah, when some people are suffering from anxiety, I'll say. Yeah, they, that's true. Or know, social anxiety. Mm-hmm. Or something's gonna happen to me when I walk, so I need someone to <laughs> yeah. who knows like Yeah, it it, it depends. It really depends. Yeah. You know, and this this I don't know my I would have normally I would have said that's a weak mind the person. But since I started doing videos with Azari and that she's been, you know, teaching me about the people from anxiety, anxiety and anxiety, um, mental health and all these things. So that's why because <laughs> that's why I did it like the back of the day, so like, yeah, that's definitely a weak mind the person. But people what, man, someone who's anxious. So back in the days, you see this you said would you say that's a weak minded person? Yeah. I'm saying back in the days I would have said oh. definitely. I'm saying okay. ever since you know we still have been doing filming with Az- Azaria, she's been teaching me a few things about mental health and that. So okay. yeah, that's why. And you need to make guys check out Azaria's Zaza's struggle. I'll I thought you were gonna say Rakeem's channel. I was like, what? <laughs> I'll check. I'll put it. I'll put the link um, down in my in my bio. You know, I'll put the link down. It's gonna be check there. It out. <laughs> I think I think it's talking about validation and invalidation. So me? you guys make sure oh, you check oh, it out. Yeah. So anyway, is there anything you like would like to add? No? Um, yeah, in conclusion, we've all got to accept things in life. The good, the bad. You know, some things are inevitable. Some mm-hmm. things you can change. Life. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Aki, for coming, man. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Anyway, guys, don't forget to like. Thanks, <laughs> guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to add anything in the comment section. Thank you, guys, for stopping by. Take care. Follow me, Rayco ninety seven. <laughs>